Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. I am so excited for you guys to see this particular video. I have a conglomerate of shots to show you. There's a couple removals, there's a relocation, and then my favorite, the macro shots um, on the screen behind me. <laughs> um, so I was able to get some really, really cool close-up shots of bald-faced hornets and German yellow jackets. I relocated a German yellow jacket nest from a cavity and from inside somebody's house to here at my house and I'm getting some pretty cool shots of that um, even though I was pretty much in the midst of doing these shots I watched this video probably about five times now and I still haven't quite done the voiceover which I'm kind of in the midst of behind me um, but either way I wanted to get as many cool shots as I could of these guys chewing on the wood to show you how they build their nest so that's what I got behind me here um, so excited for you guys to check out this video. Drop in the comments, let me know what you think, and I'll catch you at the end. All right, so here's the removal of the German yellow jacket nest. So I had to cut this out from behind a rafter um, of an overhang of a porch. And this, obviously, you can see by the right side of the screen, this wood was pretty well rotten, and the customer was fine with me cutting into it. Um, I didn't know how big the nest was, but I could see that there was a lot of activity there, and I was just ready to just cut this thing open and uh, expose the uh, expose the excitement. So, lo and behold, wow! <laughs> Can you see it from there? Not really. Oh, come on, get closer! <laughs> that is humongous. That's what she said. Let me just make sure that my camera can pick it up. Oh yeah. So this nest is humongous. Yeah. Well, it probably was acting like insulation. <laughs> It depends on how, like I was saying before about the overwintering. So I apologize for the kind of shoddy camera work here. Um, my main camera had died, bad, or no, I'm sorry, I lied. My main camera um, video card was full, and so I had to kind of rely on my cell phone, which is why it's kind of shoddy and shaky and everything else. But the only reason why I'm even showing this is because of this being a relocated nest. So you can kind of see what it looked like prior to being relocated. Um, so I did a few, um, just a little bit of vacuuming, and I pulled this thing out one solid chunk and uh, I got it right in the Rubbermaid bin. Saved a few of the adults too. I mean, you can see they're kind of hanging on in between the comb, so that that worked out really well. Um, if you guys aren't too dizzy by the end of this, um, then you, you know, you'll be able to see the uh, the cool relocation bit inside the bin. There's a lot of envelope around this nest. I mean, it was like that whole space was just packed full. And uh, you know, like the homeowner said, they were sitting off to the side watching the whole thing. And like she said, it looked like insulation. Like, well, probably acting like insulation being in there in that, that whole cavity, probably providing a little bit of uh, insulation. So that thing is huge. It's freaking awesome. And being able to get it out in one solid piece is pretty cool, too. We definitely lost a lot of adults due to them being inside the cavity and flying around still. But there was still a significant amount left over um, inside between the comb, plus the ones that were hatching. Um, I'm still astounded by how many are in this bin um, after having brought it home to my house. So this is how I have it set up where you just have this piece of wood sitting in there holding open the the lid so they can fly in and out and they are using that no problem so you saw when i pulled it out of that that um between the rafter joisting is it was just comb there was no paper so all that paper your envelope you're seeing around the edges is new that's all new stuff so they've been going out and foraging and chewing on the wood pile behind where this is sitting and uh, utilizing that for envelope so this is this next shot is about maybe five days later, 
four or five days later. Bam. Look at all that. Look at all those adults. Look at all that envelope. They covered the entire thing. Like, it is it is papered the entire way down. It is so freaking cool. I'm so excited by that. I have the Yellow Jackets down here with the lid open because it's a pretty hot day here. And there were hundreds of them on the ledge here fanning. So I had to open it up. Um, and I put a table over top so that way they would uh, be protected from the sun. So that's inside the nest right now, or inside the box. beautiful envelope but all these girls here are fanning See, they're going pretty nutty. Here I am. <laughs> yeah, it is hot. I am like, oh, I'm super sweaty. <laughs> but, um, nobody's really attacking me. These are German yellow jackets. So they're pretty, they're pretty chill. I mean, they're flying around me, but they're not attacking me per se so all right just figured to give you guys a little update on it all right so here we are at a cemetery this church is having an event coming up and they need this fall face hornet nest removed so I'm going to take care of it for him. I'm going to relocate this one as best I can. And then some of the foragers are going to have to get, um, going to have to get, uh, killed, unfortunately. Let's get to it. I'll try to wait for a few of them to go into the hole. And then we'll, uh, see if we can, uh, get this thing in one piece. So this is out the very back part of the cemetery at a church near where I live. And they, there's no electricity out there. I could have hooked it up to my car battery to use my vacuum, but I just decided, well, this is easy, easily to be relocated. Just duct tape over the hole and so they can't get out. And there were a lot around the back side of that nest. I didn't realize how many were like crawling around on it. Um, and they wanted to get in, which is kind of sad. Um, but, uh, was able to, um, to get this thing snipped off. So I brought my loppers along, moving the branches out of the way, just kind of snipping off a little, few little pieces that would, uh, if I were just to pull on them, it might make holes in the envelope and be areas where more workers could come out and swarm and mainly just be out of the nest so they couldn't be relocated. Which is my biggest concern here. Bald-faced hornets, they, they dive bomb. They don't latch on like southern yellow jackets or eastern yellow jackets. Um, like the ones I was stung in my last video. Um, they, they do more of a swarm, and then they dive bomb, and then they go right back to the nest. So what you're seeing here, like see how they're clustered around that tape? That's because they'd already flown around me, and then they went right back to where they thought the, the entrance way was. And, um, I mean, they were aggressive. They were really aggressive. They were... They were hitting my camera, they were hitting me, 
mm -hmm. um, especially once I got them back to the house and um, actually put them back on the tree where I was going to relocate them to. So a little bit of a struggle. This is an arborvita tree, and they have a lot of like, little branches, little offshoots and stuff. So it's kind of a pain getting all those pieces trimmed off away from the envelope. Uh, got it out of there, and you can see there's quite a few swarming. So they had to get hit with the black flag to, uh, to be um, dispatched. So this is right behind my barn. This is maybe 20 yards from the flat nest, or the two nests that people know um, have been kind of co-mingling and, and working together. So this is not too far from them. This is actually one of their flight paths. So I'm, I was kind of interested to see if they would be bothered by having another species nearby, or another colony nearby. And they're not, they don't even seem phased by it. They're flying their normal path. They have a one-track mind, man. When they're going out and foraging, they know where they want to go, and that's about it. They don't like to be diverted or go off and do anything else. So I took the, uh, took the duct tape off, and out come hundreds of them. I mean, they just were swarming all over the nest. They're swarming all over me. It's still incredible to me that they are able to figure out where they are. Like it's obviously it's cardinal directional. Like they they are linked to the gravitational pull um, and the uh, magnetic pull of the uh, of the Earth to be able to identify where they are and, and how to correlate that into where they stand and where they can fly to and how to get back. They also use pheromone markers, so they will actually mark certain points on their way back to travel so they know where they're going, but I'm not really sure how that works too well when they're flying you know, 20 feet up in the air. That's a nice heavy swarm. So. <laughs> So I'm going to shut my pie hole for the next, I don't know, minute and a half so you guys can hear the swarm. everybody. So I'm here just to show an update on the nests that I've relocated. Nests, plural. So I have this bald-faced hornet nest up behind me, which is the flat nest. Which I, it was two different nests that I uh, relocated side by side. So let's check them out real quick. They are doing gravy.
lots of activity, especially for this time of year. Got some builders on the bottom here. It's doing really well. I'm really happy with it. Can hardly tell that that was two nests. It's doing really good. So there's that one. One that I haven't shown you guys too much of is a German yellow jacket nest that I relocated out of a uh, out of a house. I get a lot in the comments from people asking why I don't relocate yellow jacket nests that were in like houses and things. And it's mainly just because when I pull them out, they come out in pieces and it really wouldn't be conducive to put just random pieces of comb. It wouldn't survive. So, um, so this nest, I pulled out all in one piece, just like a bald faced hornet nest. So I literally just sat it upside down in the, in the bin and they've just been They've been growing, man. It's been great. They don't bother me. I don't bother them. So I'm able to get pretty close. I mean, I walk past it all the time. Nobody stings me, but I'm also very aware and conscious about them being there and just give them respect and, and give them their space. So that's where the uh, so that's where the flat nest is. Right over there is where the yellow jackets are. And I have that stick in there just kind of propping the lid open so they can get in and out. And then over here, on the other side of this wood pile, is where I put the nest from yesterday. Another bald faced hornet nest. And these guys are already, they're out foraging. I'm not going to get too close because they are just pretty uh, sensitive about anything out of place, especially from the trauma from yesterday. So I'm sure you saw the beginning of the video where I just taped the entrance off and then just transferred the whole nest which is pretty cool I mean I'm, I'm happy that it worked out I got a lot of the foragers got a lot of the adults so and what's great about this area is there's a lot of wood over here for them to chew on so you can see here let me see if I can catch one of these guys float so this one's floating and it's gonna land I hear somebody chewing oh, it's this yellow jacket here There's, uh, there's probably 50 different wasp species on here between the Polistes wasps to yellow jackets to bald-faced hornets, which are technically a yellow jacket. I will continue to say that in every video, annoy the people who watch all my videos, and educate the people who don't know. So, um, and here's one here. Let's see if I can get a good shot of her. Ah, my shadow scared her. I've heard of things being afraid of their own shadow, but that was afraid of my shadow. Let's see if we can get a close-up of her while I'm here. So this is how I get my macro shots. Very, very slowly. I have to slowly get close to the wasp. No, she's not going to sting me. Unfortunately, the shadow of the camera is making this difficult. I can't do it without getting... Maybe I can go around the other side. Now she's aware of me. Shoot. No, come back. Keep, keep chewing. Keep chewing. I get her breathing heavy. She's working hard. Oh, she's aware of me now. So anyway, that's how I do this. Get a lot of these close-up shots. 
and I love doing it. I love coming out and finding these guys, girls, sorry, chewing and getting materials to build their nest. So anyhow, just wanted to give you guys a little update of what's happening. And for those of you who watched the other video I posted of getting stung, here's one sting right there and then another one down here on my ankle right down here uh, so itchy right now oh here's a Polistes wasp let's see if we can get in on her oh no she saw me coming she wasn't having any of that oh well so this is a Polistes wasp and I wanted to get a couple shots of hers because there's there were several different species flying around this wood pile chewing on it and things. And this is a um, a red Polistes wasp. This isn't the quote unquote red wasp that I have people commenting about. This is different. Um, they can be aggressive around their nest, but for the most part they're pretty chill. But I got a really some cool shots of her which I really wanted to include. So you see the yellow jacket on the right hand side and then the bald faced hornet that I zoom in on. She already has a pretty big ball of uh, of saliva and cellulose in her mandibles, but she keeps chewing and chewing. There's one really neat shot here where she, um, where you can see the black um, the black ball that's underneath her what, you, what I call her chin underneath her mandibles um, that she's balling up. And there's a shot here where it, she pulls off a strip of uh, wood fiber and she like kind of like chops it up like like she's sucking up a piece of spaghetti, which is pretty cool. Look at all the little fibers. This is actually this is a maple tree that I had cut. Uh, I cut logs up and split it, and it's been sitting there since the beginning of May. So this has a gray. Um, I guess you would say it's starting to decompose. Um, it's just a gray film it gets on, and that cellulose is ideal for what wasps will chew on and strip out to use for their nests. Why a lot of their nests are gray because um, this is what they use. So here she she cuts off a little a little chunk of this, uh, this little sliver and then um, right here she carries it off and I thought for sure she was just gonna like cut it out and drop it but she ended up actually like chopping it into little tiny pieces like I would think like cutting up a log <laughs> you know <laughs> to carry it home um, so she, and she kind of just works on it for a few seconds here and you see it get shorter and shorter. It's going. It's balled up. So you see the ball in her in her mandibles there. The hardest part of these shots is staying still <laughs> and getting the lighting. My light I have in my left hand. My camera's in my right hand, and I'm trying to stay still. I'm clambering over um, pile of wood and trying to get these shots. But I'm still pretty impressed with how they look. Look at the hairs on her body. She's a pollinator. That's what sets pollinators apart. So they got hairy bodies and they go from flower to flower, and that's what wasps do. Wasps are great pollinators. There she goes. Never worried about getting stung doing these shots because I'm not around their nest. I'm not bothering them. And for the most part, they're pretty one track minded. Like, their mind is in their mandibles. When they're chewing that stuff, they're really not paying attention to me visually. They're paying attention to what they're doing, chewing this um, the cellulose off these pieces of wood, and getting those fibers balled up and mixed with their saliva, so they can go back and lay that. So this is a German yellow jacket. Was able to get a pretty good shot of her chewing on this wood, which is great because the nest is only like I don't know, 15 feet away. Here chewing. I have some close-ups uh, shots that I'll be doing probably in the late fall when things start to slow down a bit of the serrations on their mandibles. So it's not just a flat blade-like mouthpiece; like it has like little serrations on it where they gr they scrape it across the wood to to loosen up that that wood fiber, and then they kind of pinch it off and chew it off. I 
I love this shot because uh, being able to see those hairs all over her body, and I had my, my light set up in such a way to where it was really reflective of, of the hairs, so you can kind of get an idea as to how many they have on their bodies. Like They're pretty fuzzy. Not as fuzzy as a bumblebee or a honeybee, but they are fuzzy enough that they can collect pollen, and when they go from flower to flower, that pollinates the flower that they go to next. Common misconception is that um, wasps are not beneficial at all in the ecosystem, and people comment and say that wasps are the a-holes that just sting people. Well, that's not their that's not their role. Their role is great pollinating. They they do pollinate a lot of flowers and things, um, fruit trees and whatnot. Um, but they are beneficial t because they also batten down the numbers of other pest insects that actually like decimate crops and plants and things. And one being a Japanese beetle. Um, I have not seen... I used to see Japanese beetles all over my grapevines throughout the summer. Where they're like chewing holes in all the leaves. They're, they're eating the, the, the grapes. But not this year. Now that I've had the flat nest up there, it has they have battened down the number of Japanese beetles significantly. And uh, maybe like 2% is how many I'm seeing as, as opposed to last year. They also attack spotted lanternflies, which are a big pest in the U.S. right now, and um, they can decimate whole trees and whatnot. And I was seeing those in the beginning of spring, but I haven't seen nearly as many, and I've actually watched one of my bald-faced hornet girlfriends carry off the carcass of a dead spotted lanternfly that must have probably either landed on the nest or whatever. So that was pretty cool. So yes, they are beneficial, and they are they are just super interesting and intelligent, and I love having them around on my property. I have not been stung once by the five nests that I have on my property. All right, everybody, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. I'm going to be dropping the crowdfunding campaign link for the GoFundMe page for helping grow my channel. If you guys care to donate at the end of this video, I'll be running the credits, and you guys can see uh, people who have just recently donated. Thank you so much for donating and supporting my channel. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I have new content coming out as many, many times throughout the week. Um, my subscribers will tell you. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my channel and dropping the comments to let me know what you think. Alright guys, I'll catch you guys on the next video.